Hola, amigos. Red Pill Biker here. You know, I got a tiny channel. Got a few subscribers. I appreciate it. And I get a few comments every once in a while. And the videos that I put up that have gotten the most comments, as few as they may be, but the ones who've gotten the most comments have been the videos I put up on a sexless marriage. And every once in a while, these comments come in and they really strike home with me. I, they uh, they hit me where I live. And I got a comment like that today from a guy who is uh, in a very difficult situation. And it really reminded me of where I was a few years ago. In the, the hopelessness and the desperation of a situation. And this is a fella that uh, feels trapped in his marriage and I'm like good god do I get that and I understand that and you know there's an old saying that says life is too short to fill in the blank you know life is too short to be unhappy life is too short to be miserable and you know what I think that's kind of a bullshit saying because I'm here to tell you life is too long it is too long to be miserable let me say it again it's not that life is too short to be miserable. It's too damn long to be miserable. The last few years of my marriage, and this is going to sound really shocking, and I don't, but I hung in there probably the last five years. I mean, it, it was not happy. It was a sexless, unhappy marriage the whole time. But I hung in there because... I felt one of us was bound to die and at the end I didn't really care which one it was I didn't wish any harm on my ex-wife I don't want anything to happen to her now but you know I'd been diagnosed with heart disease in my 40s and she was diabetic and amazingly obese so I really thought you know just just hang around Sooner or later, you're going to have a massive coronary and it'll be over. and uh, Or the other way around. And I... It was just a terrible, desperate situation. And I don't think I'm the only man out there that's went through this. I used to keep a 38 by my bed that I semi-jokingly called my exit strategy. Not to ever use on another human being. Would never do that. But I thought about it on myself because I felt so trapped. And I'm here to tell you, we are not trapped. You know, surely, um, as I thought, one of us was bound to die. But you know what? We did it. Life just continued on. Freaking modern medicine kept me alive. And same with her. We were just going to keep going and going and going. And so the resentment that I felt led to hatred and then disgust i was just disgusted with the situation i was in i was disgusted with the person i was living with and i was disgusted at the man who looked at me in the mirror every morning and so i left i finally said you know in my late 50s 57 I said, i'm done i'm out of here and I left and I never looked back. And it was very difficult to do. I'm not saying there wasn't a ton of uh, suffering that went along with that. But an interesting thing happened to me. I quit waiting to die. And I don't want to sound like a cliche here or a line from a movie. But I quit waiting to die and I began to live my life. And I can honestly say, I can say this with complete honesty these are the best years of my life and you know what after being in a uh, 25 year sexual dry spell I have a sex life I never decided to be a MGTOW monk it was never in the cards for me you don't go 25 years in a sexless relationship simply to go out and live a sexless life. But you know, 
I have that need fulfilled and I don't have a piece of paper filed down at some courthouse somewhere. I don't have a bunch of lawyers flying around me like a bunch of vultures waiting for the marriage to die. I don't have any of that. And I woke up and I made an amazing discovery. And this is something men in their 40s, 50s, and 60s need to hear and maybe, and probably more so even in your 70s and 80s. But I discovered we are the commodity. Men are the commodity after 35 or 40 years old. The whole thing has been turned upon its head. Now, in our late teens and 20s and early 30s, we were chasing the skirts. We did all the work. And we got turned down a lot. We know that to be the truth. But man, it ain't the same way now. It is not the same way now. How did I make this discovery? Well. I hadn't asked a woman out in 25 years. I didn't cheat on my wife. I didn't do any of that kind of stuff. I didn't know how to approach a woman because I hadn't done it since my early 30s. So you know what I did? I got on one of those dating sites. Put a picture of myself up, put a little bio out there. Didn't even go into any great detail. I didn't figure a cotton picking thing would happen because there's something you have to remember after you've been in a a loveless relationship where you've been blamed for everything that's gone wrong and every time you can't try to talk about what the issue was it was pointed out to you how screwed up you were you walk out of there not only with a broken heart you walk out of there with a broken self a completely broken concept of who you are your self-esteem is all but gone and so you think it to yourself who could possibly want me but nevertheless I filled out this form and put it out there and here's what I discovered I was inundated I was inundated I never once looked for anybody else now they all came to me it was a plethora of females you know I'll be honest with you most of them um, were pretty hideous none that I would have anything to do with but some weren't so bad and I'll tell you something else that's what ended my sexual drought right there so once you get to a certain age out of your 20s out of your early 30s you become the commodity and you're what people are looking for you're what the ladies are looking for now they may come out and say things like the 40 is the new 20 or the 50 is the new 30 or whatever they want to say or love me no matter how I'm built but the reality is deep inside they know that's all bullshit and they're gonna come to look at and it doesn't take much to go to the gym drop a few pounds if you need to and you probably don't even need to but just saying women are out there so you don't have to spend the rest of your life alone I would recommend never ever getting married again of course not I have no intention of ever making that mistake again. But um, this is just the first part. There's a second part to this about being trapped. We do not have to live our lives trapped in unhappy marriages under any conditions. Anyway, I don't like my videos to go past seven or eight, ten minutes at the most. And this one's uh, right at nine minutes or so. So I'm going to wrap it up. This is the first part of a two-part series. Anyway, guys, life is hard. Don't make it any harder than it needs to be. And believe me, amigos, you are not trapped. Keep it real, guys. Adios.